Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, my continuing teriyaki tour of Seattle. This is going to be stop number 12. Um, I am biking through the Arboretum right now on the way to the southern end of the Arboretum to hit Teriyaki Bowl, which is uh, it's one of these little shops that's tucked away in a, uh, in a little bit of a strip mall down here on Madison. Um, I've been to this place a couple of times in the past, but you know, I've never really sat down and eaten it in a kind of analytical way, which is not to say that you should be eating teriyaki in an analytical way, but I've always just kind of grabbed it for lunch and uh, ate it while working, you know? So we'll see how it is when I sit down and actually think about it. <laughs> that was fast. So this is another one of the cheaper stops. It was, um, it's $11.99 just for the chicken, $13.99 for the chicken and gyoza combo. Uh, so a couple bucks cheaper than your average place. I like this little mall here, you know, they've got a, a couple of nice things around. There's Nick's on Madison right up there, which is a uh, family-owned restaurant. Uh, I see Nick, Nick at, the, at the supermarket sometimes, nice guy. He always gives my kids um, Hot Wheels when we go in and eat there. Uh, there's Nishino across the street, a great little local sushi spot. Uh, you know, there's a couple of nice cafes. There's Cafe Arosa here, which does waffles and coffee, and then Bella Picurian, which does more, um, you know, croissants and things like that. And then, uh, you know, there's the, the Shell Station, which is the nicest Shell Station on the, uh, on the southern corner of the Arboretum. All right, let's find a spot in the park to go eat this, huh? So that was only $13.99 for the uh, chicken and gyoza combo, which is one of the more inexpensive ones I've had. Uh, $11.99 for chicken alone. It might be even the most, the most inexpensive one I've had. <laughs> By the way, I say more inexpensive, which is a kind of clunky sounding phrase, um, instead of saying cheaper, just because I come from a... I don't know, an editorial background. You find in editorial circles, people say more inexpensive because when you say cheaper, it implies something beyond just monetary value, whereas inexpensive is just about the money. Um, so oftentimes you see phrases like more inexpensive, which is, I don't know. <laughs> it's just one of those things people end up saying when, when you've been writing for newspapers and magazines or websites for a long time. Anyhow, let's sit down and eat it. The, uh, the azaleas are almost in full bloom now. The arboretum is gorgeous. So I'm gonna sit in here and eat. Alrighty. Found a nice spot by the, uh, the goose pond. There's a goose staring at me intently over there. Let's see how we are when we're eating with intent as opposed to uh, just eating as a casual lunch, you know? Oh, that looks, wow. This does not look like 11.99 teriyaki. I always like when the chicken's kind of like very obviously just been sliced fresh and then put on here. Sometimes you get like a mix of pieces that are just kind of tossed on there. But you can see when it's like arranged nicely like this, clearly somebody took this chicken, put it on a chopping board, cut it up, slid it onto the, into the uh, package and then put sauce on top, which me, which to me tells me that it was, uh, it's more fresh. It's not going to be, it's probably going to be, um, less dry and more freshly cooked than, uh, the kind that's been kind of sitting there holding, uh, already pre-sliced and rewarmed, you know, this looks good. All right. Let's start with the, uh, the salad. So this salad has no carrots, just chopped iceberg and dressing, pre-dressed. Very small amount of it. But I guess that's the part that most people give up first. Not me, I don't know. I like the salad. Mm. It's good. Another one of these sort of classic dressings with uh, classic teriyaki shop dressings. Sweet mayo. Not too vinegary on this one. Very light. You know, when I say sweet mayo, it almost tastes like if you've ever lived in the, uh, or been to the UK and got um, salad cream, you know, which is kind of like a thinner version, thinner, slightly tangier, sweeter, sweeter mayo. Um, that's what, that's what the dressing really tastes like to me, salad cream. Pretty good. A touch of sesame in there. I can taste some sesame oil in there too. This is a very good example of a, a classic teriyaki shop. All right. The dumplings, I can say they, I already say they don't look don't look fantastic. You can tell they've been kind of freezer burned, you know? Freezer burn is basically what happens when you, when something is frozen and then dehydrates, you know, the ice, the water content in it turns to ice and that ice sublimates, which means it turns directly from solid ice into a water vapor and leaves it. Uh, and that's what, that's what causes the sort of dehydration of freezer burned foods. You can tell that this has been a little bit freezer burned. Those dumplings have been in there a while. Well, let's see how they taste anyway. Mm. Yeah, correspondingly, this bins really tastes kind of plasticky as I spill it all over my lid. Mm. No, those dumplings are a pretty hard pass for me. All right, 
Let's see how the chicken is. This is the important part, right? I can already tell you I like the way it looks. Um, not the not the charriest char of all the teriyaki chicken I've had, but it definitely looks fresh sliced. It looks like it's been marinated, not overly marinated, not too hammy looking. It looks more, you know, meatier. And it looks fresh sliced, which is great. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. It doesn't have that smokiness or the real flavor hit of some of the better spots. Tastes like real chicken. Tastes like freshly cooked chicken. Or at least chicken that was reheated whole and then sliced. As opposed to sliced and then reheated. That's always, that's always sort of the thing that kills teriyaki is when you slice it and then you reheat the slices. Uh, and they dry out on the edges. The sauce is quite a sweet one, pretty sweet and gloppy. With some amount of sort of fruit flavor going on. For $13.99 plus tip, this is a pretty, pretty good deal. Um, actually, $11.99 if you don't do the dumplings, and I would recommend not doing the dumplings here. $11.99 for this much chicken, this much rice. Chicken that's freshly sliced. It's a good deal. Especially because you're right next to the Arboretum. And the Arboretum is a beautiful park. Year round. Alright, here's one piece that looks like it has a little more char. Maybe I need to start asking for like the well done pieces, you know, the extra charred pieces from now on. But here's a piece that has a little bit of extra char. Let's see if that makes a difference. I don't smell much smokiness even in the in the charred pieces though. Touch of smokiness, but you know what? It comes out a little bit more dry than crispy. I think the problem is probably their grill is not quite hot enough. So by the time things brown and char like this, uh, the chicken is dried out a little bit, overcooked and dried out a little bit. Whereas if you had a hotter grill, um, you can char things uh, while still maintaining that juiciness inside. All right, teriyaki bowl, not a bad deal at all. In fact, a very good deal. I like this spot, it's pretty local to me. Yeah, come here, don't get the dumplings. All right, guys, gals, non-binary pals, I'll see you next time. Hang on a second, I forgot the rice. All right, so the rice is buried under the, the chicken. So it does have that sort of, you know, covered in sauce thing going for it, which I know a lot of people like. I kind of like having my rice separate often, but you know, it looks okay. Yeah, this is properly cooked rice. Not mushy, even under the sauce, it kind of holds up. It's a solid, solid for sure. All right. Oh, and my drink today is a, um, a Snapple iced tea. I like Snapple better when it used to come in the glass bottles instead of the uh, plastic, but... You know, it still tastes like anything, anything other than actual tea. <laughs> All right, see you later.